don't pay their fair share of taxes. When has Microsoft paid a full 39% that every other American corporation has to pay? Any legitimate American corporation pays 39%. 39%. What does Microsoft pay? What does Facebook pay? Look into it, my friends, and you'll find out why they're getting away with this. So this young man is saying he's a tech worker. Who's going to pay his salary? I gave you the answer. You make Zuckerberg pay you your salary for the two years that you give to the government. And then you get the government pay on top of that as an incentive. And when you, you get your job back, guaranteed when you come back out of service. That's who will pay you. That's the answer. Does that solve your, your problem? No one's asking you to give up your house. And what about the H-1B visas that Obama just got today? Why is he flooding America with Indians, for example? Why is he flooding America with Indians, for example? Cheap labor for the boys and girls uh, in the Silicon Valley play fields, who, again, gave him huge donations to make sure that he'd give them more H-1B visas so they can make more money. Okay? Now, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Many of you don't like my idea at all. Many of you have the libertarian mentality. You say that all it will be is a waste of money, and it will bring us down a long path of infringing on the rights of the innocent. I don't agree with you. Because in wartime, in wartime right now, which we're in, you may not know this, we're in war right now. Who is going to stop them? Someone agrees with me. He says, Savage, again, you're out front. You're ahead of all the talk show hosts in America. Again, you're ahead of everybody. He said, I would push it further. Restart selective service for all 18 to 22-year-olds, male and female. 18 months for everyone with no Dodgers. No delayed starts and no exceptions. Start it in 2017 and make it like the Israeli process. Then we will have trained weapon handlers who know how to defend the country, not just smoke pot on the campus lawn and complain. I don't think we need a generalized draft at all, by the way. We do not need people sitting around doing nothing. We need a selective, selective service. We need to get smart. Just as there are new, uh, uh, in, in cancer therapy, for example, many years ago, they would use anti-cancer drugs that were not selective at all. And they would devastate people because they would not target specific cells. They wouldn't target specific cancer cells. They would target all cells. And they wipe people out. They almost kill people. In other words, you were bombing the entire cell structure of the whole body rather than specific sites where the cancer cells were growing. Well, today that's changed owing to the wonders of modern biotechnology. There are uh, cancer treatments which selectively target cancer ce only cancer cells. And I say that we need, therefore, to use the same mentality it, with a new selective, selective service. Pick the individuals that you need for the war effort, Mr. Trump. Create a new cybersecurity command. Get the smartest person in the world to run it. And draft those in this age bracket who can uh, work for the government for two years, figure out the payment, whatever it re would require, and then you'll start defeating ISIS. That's one of the things you can do. Then you can make guys like Zuckerberg, Twitter, play, Sony PlayStation, shut down their games in, in uh, the areas where the terrorists are known to uh, assemble. Certainly they are not only in one area. We understand many of them live in our own neighborhoods. But they do conglomerate in certain countries and certain areas in those countries. 855 WVNN Radio. Steve, go ahead. Let's hear your position. Michael, yes, I have two quick points. Uh, one, the, the reason the Internet was designed the way it is, it's a packet switch ne network, so that if we had an attack in the U.S. which cut off one route of the Internet, that the routers, as they're called, would find a different path. And so it's, it's virtually impossible to, cut, to shut off one area of the Internet because of the way it's designed. And secondly, uh, within the last two years, there's been a new command stood up called Cybercom, Cyber Command, whose sole mission is to fight the cyber war. And it's a Department of Defense uh, multi-branch uh, service. Yeah, I understand, but they failed us just now in, uh, in, in uh, San Bernardino. Well, yes, yeah, sir, but uh, they, there are going to be some failures, but we don't know the successes they've had. 
<laughs> well, that's Obama's argument, that we don't know the successes they've had. What are the successes that they've had? Do we know? Will we ever know? Why don't we know about them? Well, I... I mean, you know, I'd like to see, I, they keep telling us they stopped so many, uh, Feinstein, in between of the business deals, she comes up every once in a while, she pops up like a mushroom in the rain, and all of a sudden she gives a speech, Mrs. Feinstein. She pops up from the business deals, and all of a sudden says, oh, you don't know how many we've stopped. Really? How many did you stop? Why don't you make a list for us? Why don't they give us a list, like Santa Claus? Show us the uh, terrorist attacks you've stopped, Diane, because I don't believe a word that comes out of her mouth. And I don't believe they've stopped any terrorist attacks. How's that? Why should I believe that? They didn't stop San Bernardino. Why not? And I'll give you the answer. Why not? The answer is because Obama or Valerie Jarrett or somebody at that level prohibited prohibited the screening of social media going back in 2011. This just came out today. Senior officials rejected a proposal to incorporate social media screenings in the vetting process of foreign visa applicants in 2011. This was reported by all places by MSNBC. It was reviewed. It was reviewed. In other words, they were looking in, into screening social networking Internet sites for purposes of verifying information related to applicants and petitions. This went on for over a year, and then it was stopped by senior officials. And the person said, it's unusual for a policy to go through the review process for over a year and then not happen. So either Obama or Valerie Jarrett or somebody in that White House stopped this review process and permitted that Islamic murderer, the girl, the little girl, uh, who committed that massacre. So you have to understand what you're saying to me may not be true. I don't trust this government, Steve. Do you? No, I, I don't either. Not, not, uh, not with the Obama administration in charge and i think it would be useful if they would tell us the terrorist attacks they stop via uh yeah i keep hearing yeah right obama gave a speech today saying we stopped many okay list them for us right list I, list them show the the, the the ones you stopped because right now all we know is jay, jay johnson failed us in san bernardino and you didn't fire him right $1.6 billion of this new budget of $1.1 trillion is going to be used to resettle illegal aliens inside the country through 2018. Did you hear that today? Could you believe it? Yes, I heard that, but I, it's crazy. I, I, don't, I don't think they should be doing that at all. No, I don't think so either. Steve, I'm sending you a great Christmas present. It's my wonderful work of genius, Government Zero. Stay on the line. We'll send it out to you. Ryan gives it all away. The beard gave it all away. Obama's beard. Anyway, the only place you can find the most creative idea that come out to come out of talk radio in a very long time, which is mine, it can only be found on worldnetdaily.com or michaelsavage.com. Nobody else will link this article because I'm not a member of the, of the old boys club. It's that simple. I'm not a member of the old boys club. Thank God I'm a member of your club, the Savage Nation, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. You're listening to Hot Talk 560 KSFO. Someone just wrote, use West Point as a training facility. Well, well, that would be good, to use West Point for a military purpose instead of a social service. Take a look at what they're putting into West Point in Annapolis now. Hey, one, two, three, four. Hey, one, two, three, four. Then Gary Collins, Gary Collins writes, Dear Dr. S, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. P.S. I love you. I know, I had it backwards. I couldn't remember it. I thought it was uh, bushy-eyed and bright-tailed, but I... That would be in a, in a gentleman's club. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the, uh, the actual phrase. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, it is. That's Josh Goebbels' Ernest. Yes, indeed, he brushes his teeth every night and every morning. Takes a shower, uses anti-deodorant. Uh, deodorant? No, anti-deodorant. No, if you used anti-deodorant, you would smell, right? So he uses deodorant. Deodorant. Antiperspirant. You know, I only used that when I was 17 years old. I'm, I'm slipping into that now. I remember when I was 17, you know, you want to conform, right? You had to be, every hair in your head had to, like, be the right hair because you were so, like, a high school student. 
So I, for the first time in my life, I tried. I wanted to be an American. I wanted to be very normal. I got a roll-on deodorant. I remember it, and it had aluminum in it. It, like, <laughs> stuck under my arms. I hated it. Luckily, I mean, I hated that. So I go with my instincts. I wouldn't use it after that. I used it once, and it made my underarms sticky. Never used it again because I'm, I'm inherently a clean person. You don't actually smell if you're a clean person, incidentally. You don't need a deodorant. You know that you don't need a deodorant if you're if you're not hiding something. People stink who are hiding something. Generally, you're fine. I don't want to go into it, but it's true. The more they're hiding, the worse their body odor is. Did you know that? It's not only people, but it's a related thing. It's true. There was a DA here in San Francisco who was known as a stinker. They couldn't go in his office. A very left wing fanatic. He defended the worst criminals on earth. A liberal through and through came from a family of criminals who were liberals. All the judges and lawyers in his family were crooks going back three generations in San Francisco. I won't mention his name. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. It sounds like halitosis, but it isn't. And this guy was known as a stinker. You went in his office, you could puke. People would hold their noses. They would not breathe for the time they came in for a quick meeting. And it was all based on his evil nature. But you don't really need a person an anti uh, antiperspirant. Truthfully, and it turned out I, I was intuitively right is what I'm trying to say. My intuition has always worked for me, always, my whole life. Why? Because years later, as I studied uh, biological sciences, let's put it to you that way, and then I got into the field of uh, anti-Alzheimer's nutrition, which was 20 years ago, and I found the relationship between certain substances and foods which cause the degeneration of the brain and nutrients which could slow it down, which now is kind of currency, the currency in the field. I wrote Reducing the Risk of Alzheimer's many years ago. It turns out that aluminum is one of the most neurotoxic metals there is. 